Welcome to the World Challenge 2008. Coming up in this programme, a new kind of alchemy as Colombia's miners turn gold green. And the Nepalese temple outcasts who are beggars no more thanks to organic farming. But first, a reminder of the website where you can vote for your favourite World Challenge finalist, theworldchallenge.co.uk. World Challenge 2008 features 12 enterprising businesses and projects from around the world. It's for you to choose which one you think is the most deserving of the World Challenge Cash Award. If these miners have any say, ethical gold jewellery from the Colombian jungle will be all the rage. Already jewellers in the US and Europe are selling it. This gold is mined legally in small artisan mines. There's little impact on the forest and wildlife and the profits go back into the mining community. The Chocó region on the Pacific Ocean side of Colombia is five times the size of the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. Incredibly, between 20 and 50% of all plants and animals living in the Chocó are not found anywhere else in the world. In fact, Chocó is included in the elite list of the world's 25 most important biodiversity hotspots. But the wealth of gold that lies in the ground here has caused these rainforests to be decimated. Deforestation in Colombia annually results in the loss of 200,000 hectares of forest, according to the United Nations. The study estimated that gold mining here was responsible for the clearance of 80,000 hectares, damaging many of the rivers through mercury contamination and silting. These are the machines that extracted so much wealth. They destroyed over 200,000 hectares of primary rainforest, home to all of our plant and animal species. And our payment? Poverty. The only thing left to us after they took so much away. Even though the multinational mining companies have left, depredation of the forest continues. The land also risks being poisoned by the mercury used by a new generation of illegal prospectors from other regions of Colombia. They use methods that intimidate and coerce the communities so that they are fearful of reprisals. It makes it hard to fight for the rights to our land. Atención, noticia de última hora. Chucky Town se encuentra en su tierra, Chocó. Somos pacíficos, estamos unidos. Nos une la región, habita la raza y el sol del sol. It was only in 1993 that Afro-Colombian communities in the Chocó were granted communal land rights to the forest by the Colombian government. A music video by local band Chokib Town captures the fierce pride of people who refuse to give up. Their pride in their culture was a deciding factor in the formation of the Green Gold Association. We realized that we were losing our traditional mining practices and our grounds. For us, our territory is our heritage, and we had to do something as an alternative to the abuse and exploitation going on with our natural resources. In 1999, a number of organizations associated with mining and the welfare of the miners got together to create an association they dubbed Oro Verde, or Green Gold. It adopted 10 environmental and social criteria for small-scale extraction such as eliminating the use of all toxic materials in the extraction process. Aristarco and his team are on the way to visit a mine. The movement to obtain recognition of the Afro-Colombian rights from the central government has not been easy. Politicians and government officials would tell us that black people had no claim to rights in Colombia 
that our only rights were in Africa, where our ancestors had come from, and we should go back there with our claims. The association offers technical advice and financial support that enables miners to make the most of their resources, like building this dam to ensure an adequate supply of water. Creating terraces with the debris promotes the growth of local vegetation that eventually covers old mining areas. Are you still using the same process? You're not using mercury? No. No mercury at all. We don't need it using our methods for gold and platinum and extraction. In return for following the Oro Verde guidelines, miners get a premium price for their gold, 15% over market price. But how can premiums be justified in hard-nosed market economies? Medellin is the nearest large city to Chocó, infamous for its association with cocaine. Upmarket vendors like Victor Saldariaga hope to improve its reputation as the center for environmentally sound gold jewelry. He persuades his clients by telling them why he does not like using gold from sources other than Oro Verde. It means that I would be supporting illegal mining, helping people without a conscience. In the end, if what I am selling is a jewel that is a powerful symbol, for example in the case of a wedding ring, well how much better it would be if that symbol is complete. Sandra is his supplier of green gold. She works for Ami Choco, one of Oro Verde's partners that completes the chain. This is the number that allows the client to trace the gold from the mine to the final jewel. Ami Choco has played the crucial role of marketing and distribution that Oro Verde needs to survive. Amigos del Chocó understood that we do not have to show the people of Chocó what kind of development they need. They know what they want, and our role is to become a bridge between the communities, the miners, and the rest of the world. Back in the mine, the washing process begins to separate the precious metal from the soil. Whenever possible, gravity is used to bring water to the mine face, and the use of any sort of chemical is forbidden. Mines are exploited systematically, making the most of potential sources. This is green gold, chemical free. The environment is the most important thing in our lives. And if we destroy it, we are just destroying ourselves. Artisan miners have even found a replacement for the mercury used in traditional mining practices to help separate the gold. This plant extract works by adhering to the sand and soil, making it easier to clean the precious nuggets. It's very different from the type of mining being carried out by large operators in Chocó. They only want to rip the gold out without caring about the environment. They work all the time, 24-7. They don't care that water is needed by villages and communities. They just contaminate it with sediment and mercury. The bulldozers are destroying our unity. In the small town of Tado, Americo sells his weekly product, happy in the knowledge that the premium he will receive stands for much more than financial profit. The project has been of great benefit to us. As long as we work hard and follow the guidelines, we obtain food security. From Medellin, the green gold is now being sold in the US and Europe, and the profits, for once, are reaching the people of Chocó. 
lo más significativo es cambiarle la noción de tiempo a los The most important thing has been to change the notion of time for the miners who have joined us. A miner that lives from day to day barely making a living is only interested in survival. A miner in Oro Verde is a miner who has decided to look for a better future. Could it be that Choco's time has finally come? The opportunity of a livelihood even after the gold runs out. The proceeds from the premium on green gold help the association to start this farm. A farm that provides food security, training and a fresh start for a future without gold. And how could winning World Challenge 2008 help? We've already won, just by being given an opportunity to show the world that we exist, as black people, with our own culture, with this wonderful biodiversity which is our gift to the world and which we take care of. To be able to show people that jewels can be made with green gold, the best loved gold in the world, well that is a message that we could give everyone if we won this competition. Remember, you have the chance to decide which World Challenge finalist is the most deserving and you can help them win a cash prize. Visit theworldchallenge.co.uk and find out how you can cast your vote. Don't go away. In part two of World Challenge 2008, the Nepalese who once had to beg for a living but who now have an alternative with these vegetable plots they tend on what was urban wasteland.